Hey everybody, it's um, almost September of 2020 and normally we, we would be gearing up to head to Camp Westwind for Tunes in the Dunes, one of our favorite music events. Uh, this year, of course, no one's getting together at all. Uh, we are going to try to do something online, um, but uh, more details on that later. Um, in the meantime, I usually make an instrument every year to auction or raffle for Camp Westwind. Camp Westwind is a special place on the Oregon coast. It's like a... Um, uh, UN protected biome. It's a national historic site. It's an old Girl Scout camp. It's a civilian conservation corps site. It's just a really cool place. And their main mission is outdoor education for youth, which is super important to us, which is why I donate in Saran every year. So I usually try to pull out a piece of wood that they give me. Um, I've gotten lots of nice wood from West Wind over the years. It's uh, right on the Oregon coast and it's a rainforest, um, a temperate rainforest and stuff grows pretty fast um so it's it's uh, most of the wood i get is pretty wide grained but it's nice wood i really like it and it's fun and i have a special slab here that i think i'll show you and then i'll show you how i might lay out the pieces to uh, plan for an instrument so let me move the camera this is a slab of hemlock it's about three inches thick two and three quarters i got it five years ago four years ago so it's plenty dry now and uh i love hemlock uh, it's hard to find good tight grain hemlock. It tends to be around in my area, just kind of construction grade wood, but this is really beautiful. It's got some spalting in it and it's got all of these cool bug holes. So, you know, I like bug holes, but there's a limit to how much you can take, <laughs> you know, um, they're useful in some places and decorative, but after a while, not so much. So you can see that this is one slice out of the, almost the center of a tree. Uh, this would be the heart, and then these are the sap wood on each side. You can see the bark edges. Um, things to watch out for, in the middle there's a big knot, not the kind of knot I can usually use. It, use. And there's also what looks like a check and a crack starting here and going up. So, um, and this is way more wood than I'll need for one instrument. I might, I'm going to use the rest for hemlock necks. I love hemlock for necks on a ukulele. So, um, let's set the camera a little different and see if I can show you what I'm thinking about. Uh, so the wood grain is going like this through the tree. This is a center slice. So at the edges, it mimics quarter sawn wood by maybe off by 15 degrees. And in the middle, it's flat sawn. Um, so I might, and also I think I wanna make everything out of hemlock except for decorative trim. So I might use walnut um, as the decorative uh, trim just to offset the color of the hemlock. So that's this color. So I might do walnut for fretboard, head plate, bridge, maybe binding, stuff like that. So to begin with, um, the necks, I'm probably gonna make the neck by laminating up two pieces of hemlock that are flat sawn and then putting them together with a sandwich of walnut to make quarter sawn. So that means getting the neck basically out of the center section somehow. Um, and I'm watching out for this split right here. Um, I want real straight grain for the neck. So I think what I would do is do something like this. That's one half of the neck and then I would sandwich, oops, sorry, I'm not really in the shot. And then I would sandwich the other half of the neck like this, oops, so that when you put them together, they really kind of look like book match pieces because they're so close to each other in the board. Does that show up? Not really. Let's get a marker. I can always adjust it later. So I'll do that. Two halves of the neck. Then, if I'm going to make a little scout ukulele, the next thing I need to pick is slices for the back and sides and slices for the top. This is wide enough that if I chose to, I could do one piece back and si uh, top and back, which could be cool, but that's not a very economical or ecological use of wood. So I don't do it too often. Um, and I like the wormy sections for these parts. So... I think what I might do a wormy top and back like that and then a wormy sides like this
and then use walnut for everything else. So here would be, I'd get plenty of slices for backs and sides, for backs and tops, and then plenty of slices for sides, and then here's our necks. And then out of the center of the necks where there's waste, I'll carve blocks for the um, interior blocks and bracing inside the instrument. That'll be easy to do. Hemlock will be great for bracing. So yeah, this is a lot more wood than just one can uh, scout uke, but I think these little wormholes are going to be really nice. So let me get this sawed up and see if it turns out that it's okay inside. Sometimes when you get bug holes like this, you go inside and it's just powder and it's a total mess. Sometimes though, they're just really contained like this and it looks nice. We shall see. Stay tuned. Update, update, update. So I uh, spent some time over at the bandsaw and the joiner um, to get to saw up some of this hemlock and I'll show you what I got. So here's the top and back pieces with the beetles, the beetle holes in it. It actually has some staining to it. It looks like the blue, uh, blue stained pine that happens when beetles kill pine trees. So I wonder if this is beetle kill hemlock. This is cut in 1997, so I don't know if that lines up when all that happened or is happening still. But I think what happens is the beetles, they introduce some sort of microorganism like a fungus and it makes these stains. So that's gonna be a top or a back. And then here's the other top or back. And despite the, um, Despite the beetle holes, it's still going to be good. It's 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 a good top wood. The sides look similar, although I probably will use less beetle wood there. Um, nice color variation though. So for the necks, I actually got two necks. I thought I would have to put these together to make one neck, but it was almost double thick as what I needed. So I took one neck, sliced it up the middle, and then we'll introduce a walnut strip down the middle. That's for artistic contrast. It also stiffens the neck and it gets us the width we need in order to have a wide enough headstock. Uh, then that same board of walnut um, we'll use for the fretboard, head plate, any other trim that we have. I got plenty left over for cutting braces and all that. So, yep, 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 we're on our way. This is gonna be a really cool U. The walnut actually comes from Bashan Island, a little farther north. Um, from my friend Calf, so it'll be nice to have um, wood from two parts of the northwest coast. S slow down! Sorry, I live on a busy road. So yeah, we'll keep that going and I'll keep you posted as we go ahead with this uke for Camp Westwind. It will be available for auction eventually and I'll give you those details later. Cheers!